I have the SharePoint list of employees that includes a date column for their birth date. In this Microsoft Power Automate tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a scheduled flow that will check this list every weekday and send an email to the employee to wish them a happy birthday. This list also includes a person column for the employee's manager. I'll also show you how to build a three day and day of reminder email to the manager. This flow can apply to a variety of scenarios, such as a list of clients, students, or even projects. Your SharePoint list may look a bit different than mine. You just need to make sure you have the following, a column for the email recipient's name, email address, and a date. My SharePoint list has a person column that stores the employee's Microsoft profile, which includes their name and email address. If your SharePoint list is using single line text fields, that's okay too. You'll just need to adjust your flow to suit your data. In my SharePoint list, I have a test employee where I've set their birth date so that the month and day match today's date. I'm also going to take note of the item ID so that I can use this in the flow while building and testing it. The ID column is hidden by default. If you aren't seeing it in your SharePoint list, click on add column, then show or hide columns and check off the ID column. We'll start off by creating a manually triggered flow. Once the flow is ready to go, we'll replace the manual trigger with the recurrence trigger. In Power Automate, create a new instant cloud flow. Give your flow a name and select the manual trigger. Add the get items action. Select your site address and list name. In the filter query field, we want to filter the list by the test item. I'll use the ID column for that and enter EQ for equals to and enter the ID number. Whenever you are building out a new flow, it's always best practice to limit the number of items returned so that your tests take less time to run. Rather than returning all items from my SharePoint list, I'm only returning a single item. Alternatively, you can use a top count field to limit the number of items returned. Add a compose action to store the outputs from the get items action. This action is optional. Remember to rename your actions to keep things organized. I'm going to save my flow and run a test. Let's take a look at the output of the birth date column. Because the birth date includes a year, we can't use the OData filter query to match the day and month to today. We'll need to use a filter array action instead. Depending on when you are running your flow, it's good practice to add a convert time zone action to ensure that the date comparisons are accurate. In the base time field, insert an expression. We'll use the UTC now function to get the current date and time. For the source time zone, search for a coordinated universal time and select that. For the destination time zone, search for your local time zone and select that. For the format string, search for round trip and select that. Next, add a compose action to hold the current month and day so that we can use it in our filter array action. This compose action is optional. However, if you are new to Power Automate, it can help you to better understand what is going on in your flow. Personally, I like to use compose actions to confirm the outputs of the dynamic content and expressions in my flow. Insert an expression. We'll use the format date time function to convert the outputs from the action above into a format that we can use to filter the items returned from the SharePoint list. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the outputs from the convert time zone action. Add a comma and single quotes. I'll enter capital MM dash and lowercase DD to match the date format from the get items output. Run a test to verify the outputs of this compose action. Next, add a filter array action. We'll use this action to filter out the items returned from the get items action. Instead of using an apply to each and condition action, which would have to loop through each item in your list and use a condition action to check if the birth date contains today's date, it's much more efficient to use a filter array action to filter out the items first before using an apply to each action. In the from field, insert the value dynamic content from the get items action. In the first value field, select the column that is storing your date. In my case, I'm going to select the birth date column. Since the birth date column in SharePoint is storing a full date, which includes the year, we need to change the operator to contains. In the second value field, insert the outputs from the compose action above. 
This filter array action will check the items returned from the get items action to see if any items have a birth date that contains today's month and day. Next, add a compose action. Anytime I use a filter array action or a get items action with a filter query, I always add a compose action to store the number of items returned. Insert an expression. We'll use the length function. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the body outputs from the filter array action above. Let's run a test. Since this flow will be running on a schedule, we want to check if there are any items returned before continuing on with the flow. Add a condition action. In the first value field, insert the outputs from the compose action above. Change the operator to is not equal to and insert a zero in the second value field. In the S branch, add and apply to each action. Insert the body dynamic content from the filter array action. Next, add a compose action to store the first name of the employee. Currently, the only dynamic content from the filter array action available to select from is the item and body. You'll need to use an expression to access additional content. Let's take a look at the outputs of the filter array action from the previous test run. To return any dynamic content from the filter array action, you need to use the item function and a key. The key is the red text in between the double quotes. I'm going to insert a few compose actions to hold the dynamic content from the filter array action. These compose actions are optional. Although these expressions that I'll be using can be inserted directly into a send an email action, it slows down the flow building process. I prefer to use compose actions to store the dynamic content from the filter array action, especially when the last action in my flow is to send an email. It's a lot more efficient to run a test and check the outputs of the compose action rather than waiting for an email to arrive. The compose actions can also help with troubleshooting. In the compose action, insert an expression. Insert the item function followed by a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. Enter the key of the dynamic content in between the single quotes. In my case, it's first name, all one word, with a capital F and N. Add another compose action to store the employee's email address. Insert an expression. Add the item function, followed by a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. The profile column in my SharePoint list stores the employee's Microsoft profile. The employee's email is nested under the profile key. Enter profile with a capital P, forward slash, and email with a capital E. If you are storing the email address in a single line text field, enter the appropriate key here. Add a compose action to store the manager's first name. Insert an expression. Add the item function, followed by a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. The manager's name is nested under the manager key. I'll enter manager with a capital M, forward slash, and display name, all one word with a capital D and N. In order to return the first name, I'll need to wrap this entire expression in a split function. Press the up arrow key to move your cursor to the start of the expression. Enter split with an opening bracket. Press the down arrow key to move your cursor to the end of the expression. Add a comma and single quotes. I'll insert a single space. Press the down arrow key to move to the end of the expression and enter a closing bracket. This will split the display name by the space between the manager's first and last name. To return the first name, we'll need to grab the first part of the split string. Wrap the entire expression in a first function. Press the up arrow key to go to the start of the expression and enter first with an opening bracket. Press the down arrow key to move your cursor to the end of the expression and enter a closing bracket. Add one more compose action to store the manager's email address. The manager's email address is nested under the manager key. Insert an expression and add the item function followed by a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. Enter manager with a capital M, forward slash, and email with a capital E. Run a test. I'm going to confirm that the outputs of these compose actions are correct. If you need to use additional dynamic content, feel free to add additional compose actions to your flow. Add a send an email v2 action. We'll use this action to send an email to the employee. 
Whenever I add a send an email v2 action to my flows, I always insert my email into the recipient field while I'm building and testing the flow. Insert a subject line and the outputs from the compose action that contains the employee's first name. In the email body, add a single line of text to confirm who the email will be sent to. Insert the outputs from the compose action that contains the employee's email address. This line is just for testing purposes and when the flow is ready to go, we'll remove it. I have some email content on my clipboard that I'm going to paste into the email body. I'm going to replace the employee's first name placeholders with the compose action output that contains the employee's first name. Add another send email v2 action. I'm going to insert this action in a parallel branch so that both emails will be sent at the same time. We'll use this action to send an email to the employee's manager. I'll insert my email into the recipient field as well. Insert a subject line and the outputs from the compose action that contains the employee's first name. In the email body, add a single line of text to confirm who the email will be sent to. I have some email content on my clipboard that I'm going to paste into the email body. I'll replace the placeholder text with the appropriate dynamic content. I'm also going to bold the first line of each email body so it stands out. Run a test. I've received two emails, one for the employee and one for the manager. I'm going to confirm that the content of the email is the correct content for the recipient of the email. If you only want to send an email on the day of the birthday to the employee and manager, use the timestamp in the description box below to skip ahead to the replace a trigger section of the tutorial. To add a three day reminder email to this flow, we'll need to adjust the filter array action to filter items where the birth date is three days from today. First, I'm going to add a scope action to my flow to group my date actions together. This makes it easy to collapse these actions with a single click. It also helps to keep my flow organized. I'll drag and drop these actions into the scope action. Add a compose action to store the number of days in advance of the employee's birthday. I prefer using a compose action for this as it makes it easy to adjust the days at a later date. Instead of needing to edit the expression, you only need to edit the number here. Next, add another compose action to store the dynamic date. We'll need an expression to add the number of days in this compose action to today's date. Insert the add days function. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the outputs from the compose action that is storing today's date. Add a comma and insert the outputs from the compose action storing the number of days to add. Add another comma in single quotes. Enter the date format of capital MM dash and lowercase dd. The filter array action is currently only filtering out items where the birth date contains today's month and day. It may look like the filter array action can only accept a single condition. With the advanced editor, you can use an expression to filter by multiple conditions. Click on edit in advanced mode. We'll be building this expression in a text editor because it's impossible to type an expression in this editor as the cursor always jumps around. Copy this current expression onto your clipboard and paste it into a text editor. Switch back to basic mode and compose another condition. In the second value field, delete the outputs from the compose action that contains today's date and insert the outputs from the compose action that contains the date three days from today. In my case, it's the dynamic date to compose action. Click on edit in advance mode and copy the expression to your clipboard and paste it onto the next line in the text editor. First, remove the at symbol from the second line. Next, add a comma to separate the conditions. Since I want to filter out the employees where their birth date, month, and day is equal to today's month and day, or is equal to the month and day in three days from today, we'll need to use the or operator. Wrap this expression in an or function. Insert the word or after the first at symbol and insert an opening bracket. Go to the end of the expression and insert a closing bracket. This expression will now check to see if the employee's birthday is today, 
or is three days from today. Copy this expression to your clipboard and paste it back into the filter array action. In the apply to each action, add an additional compose action to store the employee's birth date. Insert an expression. Add the format date time function. Add the item function, followed by a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. The employee's birth date is stored in the birth date column. The key is birth date with a capital B. Place your cursor before the closing bracket. Add a comma and single quotes. I'd like to format this date to only include the month and day. Enter capital MM dash DD. To streamline this flow, I'm going to initialize a string variable to hold some text that I'll use in the email to the manager. If the birthday is in three days, the email should say in three days. If the birthday is today, the email should say today. Insert a condition action. In the first value field, insert the outputs from the compose action that contains the employee's birth date. Leave the operator as is equal to and insert the outputs from the compose action that contains today's date. If the employee's birthday is today, in the yes branch we'll set the variable to today. Add a set variable action. Because the email that is sent to the employee will only need to be sent on the employee's birthday, we'll need to drag this send an email action into the yes branch. If there isn't a match, this means that the employee's birthday is in three days. Add a set variable action to the no branch. This variable will contain the text in three days. However, instead of hard coding the number three, insert the outputs from the compose action that is storing the number of days in advance of the employee's birthday. This way, if you decide to change it to five days or seven days, the text stored in this variable will change dynamically. The send an email to the manager action can remain outside of the condition branches because this email will be sent to the manager if the employee's birthday is today or in three days. I'm going to adjust the subject line and insert the variable. In the body of the email, I want to convert the variable text to lowercase. For that, I'll use the to lower function and insert the variable. In SharePoint, I'm going to adjust the test employee's birth date to three days from today. Let's run a test. I should only receive a single email for the manager. Now that I've confirmed that the flow works, I need to adjust the recipient of my email actions. In the send an email action to the employee, I'm going to remove my email address from the recipient field and insert the outputs from the compose action that contains the employee's email address. The labels for compose actions aren't very helpful. However, if you hover over a label, you'll see the name of the compose action appear below. This is also why it's important to rename your actions. In the manager send an email action, I'm going to remove my email address from the recipient field and insert the outputs from the compose action that contains the manager's email address. Lastly, I'm going to replace the manual trigger with the recurrence trigger. Adjust the settings of this trigger to suit your preferences. I'd like this flow to run every weekday morning at 8 a.m. I'm going to change the frequency to week and select all weekdays. I'll select my time zone in 8 for 8 a.m. If your SharePoint list contains items where the date column is empty, you will need to adjust your filter array action, otherwise your flow will fail. Let me show you. I'm going to remove the birth date value from my test item and run a test. The flow failed. Let's modify the filter array expression. Since I already have this expression in my text editor, I'm going to delete it and switch back to the basic mode. 
In the first value field, insert the birth date dynamic content and change the operator to is not equal to and insert an expression. We'll use the null function. Click on edit in advanced mode and copy this expression to your clipboard and paste it onto the first line in the text editor. Delete the second at symbol and insert a comma after the first line. We'll need to wrap the entire expression with the AND function. Insert the word AND after the first at symbol and add an opening bracket. Place your cursor at the end of the expression and insert a closing bracket. Copy the expression to your clipboard and paste it back into the filter array action. Let's run another test. The flow ran successfully. I'll add the birth date back into the SharePoint item and run one more test to confirm everything is still working. Because I've already removed my email address from the recipient field, the email should be in my sent items folder. If you found this video helpful and plan to build a flow like this one or one similar to it, please consider giving this video a like. What other flows are you looking to build? Let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like to learn more about how to use the filter array action in your flows, watch this video. Thanks for watching.